I noticed you made fun of my boy Simba's claw caps, but my nails match them. You got matching claw caps with your yeah. cat. Oh, let me find that picture. I gotta, I gotta show everybody this. This, this is no, oh, no, not that's not it. Simba, unlike my girl, Simba wears claw caps because he has rage issues. <laughs> to put um, it mildly. And the girls let us trim their claws. Like one, you know, one of us hold them, one's, and they don't love it, but they let us do it. Peggy will actually sit in my lap and let me file her little claws with my nail file because they are very gentle cats. Simba, not so much. So the shelter agreed when I adopted him. If I brought him back, they would help me with the claw caps because I don't know how to do them. And it's literally a three person job. Like there was one person to wrestle him still, he was wrapped in two towels, and that person got peed and pooped on. There he one is. Person, there. One person to click his claws and physically apply the caps. And I was there to fill the little claw caps with glue and hold his urine soaked feet so that he didn't kick her in the face. So, and he made sounds that like a demon on meth would hear these sounds and be like, what is that? <laughs> See, Grady will let me put claw caps on. It all vibes. If, if you've ever put claw caps on a cat, here's how what, what it entails. They're these little plastic claw covers. Yeah. That you They're have to... Squishy, rubbery, kind of. Yeah, and you have to fill them with super glue. Yep. And then glue them onto the cat. And Grady, bless his heart, has always let me do it all by myself. Well, Grady is a very sweet, gentle cat. <laughs> Simba will murder you. Yeah. Peggy and Dottie let us clip theirs, so they don't need the claw caps, because they'll let us clip them pretty re regularly. Right. And they're pretty gentle about it, so it's fine. They don't need the claw caps. He doesn't like the clipping. The claw caps you only have to do once a month. The clipping you'd have to do once a week. So it's yeah. less pain for longer benefit. But yeah, he... And I think the poor thing, I think he thought he was being returned. Oh. Like, soon, as soon as he realized who he was... He went from like sweet loving Simba to murder. murder. Don't take me back. Yeah. Fuck you all. Yeah. Like he was just fucking furious. And then I got him in the car to go home and he screamed at me for a while. And then he was like, oh, okay. You're keeping me. <laughs> and he came home and he just rolled around on his favorite blanket and purred. And I'm like, buddy, I'm sorry. No, we're not taking you back, pal. It's fine. It's fine. Poor guy. All right. Well... Poor kitty, but it is time for the horrible shit. So let's get to the horrible shit. Each week, oh no, Catherine, the Radio Daddy audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, some of you may remember a little film by the name of National Lampoons. Vacation. I mean, that just came out like two years ago, right? With Christina Applegate and... No. No. And I have to tell you, for one thing, the side note for all this, because this is a bit unrelated, I have to tell you, um, that film does not hold up well. It's, no. it, it's kind of awful. It's become my nephew's, like, favorite, one of his favorite movies, so I watched it a few times when I was at the house with him, and I was just like, this isn't funny. It's awful. Well, we uh, this week we have a real life Clark W. Griswold. No. Yeah. And Henry is a journalist. Derp. We got video. Let's let's take it from the video. Don't do that. This is footage from Yellowstone National Park. Bison harassment? What you're seeing is a man. A little bit hard to see because vertical video. Why do you do that? That's a bison, which is a big ass fucking beast. And here's a man who has gotten out of his car and is taunting it on the highway. Bro, you're going to lose. Also, they're in danger. You don't get to fuck with them. They can do whatever they want. You, yeah. There's there's seven billion of us. We're less inclined to be able to do whatever we want. Right. 
I thought, I th actually, I think we're closer to eight billion now, but. Oh, 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 there's the charge. Yeah, yeah. Now you're gonna die. What are you doing? What the hell is, what? Uh, so here's, here's the story. Is this man dead now? No, he's not. Unfortunately. How? From drunk and disorderly to bison harassment, please say Oregon man had a hell of a week. I'm amazed this wasn't a Florida dude, to be honest, because th this seems like a Florida MO, but... I'm amazed he's not dead. Um, Yellowstone officials say a man who was arrested after appearing to be intoxicated and argumentative during a traffic stop was stopped again days later and cited only to go on to taunt a bison, which was recorded in a viral video, then arrested again. East Oregonian called it a trifecta, Rinky managed to get cited in three national parks during the past week. It was a combination of drawing attention to himself, coordination among the park rangers, and a little bit of luck that accumulated his arrest. It started uh, July 28th in uh, Grand Teton National Park, south of Yellowstone. Details of the first incident are sketchy, but Rinky, 55, was cited for drunk and disorderly. After spending the night in jail, he was released on bond, required him to follow the law and avoid alcohol. July 31st, three days Spoiler later. Alert, he did neither of those things. <laughs> three days later, Yellowstone National Park, uh, they cited him for not wearing a seatbelt as a pastor and noted he appeared intoxicated. They didn't know R Rinky's bond conditions. Um, Rinky was later cited by another R Yellowstone visitor who took video of him walking up to a bison in a roadway, congested with stopped cars, and waving his arms. Animal charges him a couple times, but Rinky doesn't get hurt. Yellowstone officials warned to stay at least 25 yards away from bison, which injured tourists who get too close every year. Instead, the Missourian reported the man caught on video walked toward the bison, which pointed Animal down the side of the road. He waved his arms like a matador, and the bison charged at him. The man ran in a circle while the bison stood in the road. The man waved his arms again, prompting the bison to charge at him again. And here's his mugshot, by the way. Yeah, homeboy needs to admit. Homeboy needs to just own the fact that his hair is going. <laughs> Fellas, I know it's tough. Yeah, that that forehead starts getting bigger. And, you know, then you get the peaks and stuff. And yeah. I know it's tough. And you figure, you know what? I can just move this hair and it'll cover the spot. Mm -hmm. You're not fooling anybody. You're, you're not. You're not fooling anybody. I just, just just bick it and be done. What the fuck was this guy doing? He was just touring national parks being a dick. And fucking shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that? Who just messes with a bison? Oh, that thing is bigger than a car. Yeah, honestly, all the other drivers are lucky that the bison didn't charge one of the cars. I mean that that is that is. I have seen cars that are smaller than a bison. Yeah, Pre pretty much every my car is probably smaller than a bison. Pretty much every subcompact is because I drive a Honda Fit. My car is going to lose a fight with a bison. Just I. Why? What the fuck kind of vacation are you on? Is this your fuck it list? <laughs> is this the fuck national parks list? <sighs> Is this owning the libs? <laughs> oh. I fucked up in every national park to own the libs. Some more travel shenanigans. And we've had a lot of airplane stories lately. It makes me glad I'm not flying anymore this year. At least I don't think I am. I hope I'm yeah. not. We go to Missouri a few times a year to see Dan's mom and, you know. What's the one word you don't say in an airport? Bomb. You don't say it. You don't say bomb. You don't say anything that sounds like bomb. You say mother. Yep. You, you. If you're with a guy named Tom, you call him Thomas. Bob, you call him Robert. Yep. Or Bobby. Bobby will work. 
you you don't say you just don't so what the fuck what the fuck were you doing um orlando oregon fail <laughs> the oregon fail yeah that's nice uh orlando flyer upset over seat preference seat references bomb plane <sighs> empty a norwegian's airline pastor unhappy with his seat made a reference to a bomb on a flight out of Orlando International Airport on Sunday night, forcing hundreds off the plane. <sighs> Orlando police officers responded to gate 87 just before 6 p.m. Uh, police said a male pastor was upset over a seating arrangement and made a reference to a bomb that was overheard by other passengers. Nothing suspicious was found. The man was questioned by police. Three people were removed from the plane. It is unknown whether the man was able to reboard. The FBI is now investigating. Why do people think that a bomb threat is customer service? Uh, yeah, I know, right? All of a fucking sudden, instead of I want to speak to your supervisor, it's well, I have a bomb. It's 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 negative attention. These motherfuckers did not learn this shit in fucking kindergarten. Air travel fucking sucks. It yep. sucks for everybody. It, it sucks. It's not fun. It's terrible. Nobody likes it that much. Nope. I mean, to be fair, when we flew to Hawaii, we went first class, and that was pretty sweet. But even still, mm -hmm. you're spending a number of hours in a fucking metal tube with pressurized air and a bunch of strangers. Yep. It sucks. Like, at its best, it's not that great. No one wants to be in the plane. No one wants to be no. in the airport. No one wants... Airports are bullshit. Yep. Deal with it. But no, I'm... I'm no, I, I am special, and you're going to pay attention to me, so I'm going to say the word you pay attention to. That'll make everything okay. No, that'll put you on a watch list. That'll and, make it harder for you to fly. Yeah, you're not getting where you were going. I guarantee goddamn to you. Once you say bomb, your travel is over. Yeah. You're done. That's you can, it. You can just forget your vacation. Yep, it's done. You're 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 not going where you wanted to go. You're going someplace you really didn't want to go. Yeah. Even more than the airport. Cause at that point, when you just when you say the B word, you've pretty much wasted everybody's time. And we're talking about airport security. They're already not happy people. But Nash, they didn't get the seat they wanted. And they're more important than all those other people. You've just made someone angry whose job it is to look up your butt. Mm-hmm. And go through all your shit. Yeah. Hope you didn't put anything embarrassing in your luggage. You just... Why? But that's not the worst flying story we have this week. This is the worst one. This is a first. Whenever we have a first, I get a little scared. No one, to my recollection, no one has ever done this before. We need a little fanfare for when we actually have the first of something. Because after a fucking decade, first time things are wearing thin. I know, but here's what happened. Um, oh. Arkansas man tried to steal Jet... To go to concert. Okay. <laughs> Police say an Arkansas man accused of uh, trying to steal a commercial jet told investigators. I can't read it. I can't read that next line. It hurts told me. Investigators, too. he thought piloting the plane would involve little more than pushing buttons and pulling levers. What? Even if that's true, which I don't think it is, a big part of that is knowing which buttons to push and which levers to pull and when. You can't just be like, do, 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 do. <laughs> it's not going to work. You die. <laughs> Technically, driving a car is just pushing buttons and doing this, but it matters when and how. <laughs> Investigators say 18-year-old uh, Zamarcius Devon Scott wanted to fly out to an out-of-state concert when he hopped inside an Eagle, American Eagle jet at Texarkana Regional Airport. Texarkana Gazette reports Scott was inside the cockpit when he was arrested early on July 4th 
He's charged Monday and remains jailed Thursday on commercial burglary and attempted theft of property. Envoy Air operates the plane. Company says the 44 seat jet wasn't damaged. I I I just how this is Did not ground. What? Did he get it off the ground? No. He just he got into the jet and started fucking around with it. So obviously it did not work. But Oh my god. How what a fuck you fucking idiot. I mean, I, I played a video game where you fly a plane and that shit was easy. Yeah, I've played Flight Simulator too. Do you know how many times I fucking crashed? A lot. A lot. I can't drive in video games. I'm perfectly fine driving a real car, but for some reason, you put me in a video game driving scenario, and if I need to do this, I do this. And then I hit a tree, and then I go off a cliff. Like, for some reason, put in front of a video game, I drive like this. <laughs> Tongue out and everything. It's ridiculous. I don't know why. I... I yeah, wing wing makes a wonderful point. How was this guy planning on landing? Just push some buttons and pull some levers. You have to ask permission to take off and to land. They don't just let you land. There are people there are planes waiting for that airstrip. Yeah. And they take turns and you have to get in on the turns, and if you don't, oh fuck. Also, you have to not hit the 400 other planes that are in the air. Yep. You have all to, the time. Yeah. Not, not even, like, I don't even know how many planes are in the air over the United States at any given time, but it's a fucking lot. To, and you have to not hit any of them. He wanted to go to a concert. Man, whatever happened to, like, following the dead around in a fucking beat-up Volkswagen? Yeah. You know... Put some effort into your shit. Steal a jet. Now, this will be easy and faster. No, no, no. You, know, you follow kids. Back you, in my day. You, you sleep at the rest stops. Yeah. You eat you, out of the fucking vending machines. You bathe in a rest stop, like, bathroom, and it's disgusting. Yep, but that, that's, that's what the sacrifice you make to follow a band this is this is just bullshit. Damn kids today! I'll just do the J. I'll just push the button. Boop 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 boop, and everything is fine. Boop, no, boop, it's fine into play. It's not fine, honey. No, it's not fine. <sighs> you fucking idiot. Oh, okay. All right. You're also now on a watch list, by the way, because your ass tried to steal a plane. Yep. And I don't know if you remember the last guys in this country that. <laughs> A commercial plane. But it didn't end well for fucking anybody. No. So they're they're not they don't have a sense of humor about that shit. No. They they will always make a big deal about it. Forever. So you're not getting on a plane anytime soon. Well, let's move from air travel to convenience stores. And every time we have a convenience store story lately, it's just been awful. And this one is no better. First of all, the, the the ignobility of being kicked out of a 7-Eleven is one thing. I don't know. I've seen people, like, it doesn't take a lot to get kicked out of a 7-Eleven, I don't think. However, the, a wonderful song lyric says, Grace is just the measure of a fall. It's how you handle life's little downs that that measures what you are that that gains other people's respect this this is not how you handle it man dumped bucket of waste inside 7-eleven one of the more vile episodes to recently transpire inside a 7-eleven a florida man yesterday dumped a bucket containing human feces and urine Inside a convenience store in St. Petersburg, investigators Where allege. Did he get a? Oh, oh. We'll, we'll 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 get to that. Investigators allege that Damian okay. Sims, forty-one. Ugh. That's my age. 
Arrived at the 7-Eleven around 1.30 a.m. Wednesday, I proceeded to toss the slurry of human waste on the floor of the business. Uh, pictured at right, Sims apparently obtained the waste from a portable toilet. The defendant threw a bucket of porta potty liquid human feces and urine. In late May, Sims was has trespassed from the 7-Eleven and, quote, returned tonight with a bucket of human feces. Um... Uh, he was also noted to, to, there was an indication of alcohol influence. The incident was recorded by store security cameras. All right. Couple things. First off, he looks way too happy about this. Yeah. That's, that is not the mugshot of a man. No, he looks way too happy. And second, dude, you got kicked out of a 7-Eleven. Let that shit go. It's a 7-Eleven. another one two blocks away. There's, you're not lacking for 7 It's not like, oh no, where will I get my slushy now? There's gonna be one. Jokes. I mean, I don't know if it's like this in Florida, but up here, at least on Long Island, you can't throw a rock without hitting a 7-Eleven. You'll hear a little less so, but I can still name three in my town. You'll still get your fucking slushy. You might have to to leg it a few blocks. Like you can still get a hot dog that's been sitting on the warmer all day. But no, this guy we spent weeks stewing about this, grumbling to himself. At fucking Seven Eleven, they think they're better than me. I'll show them. Why always with fucking excrement? Why? Why? Are they evolving backwards? And you know what? He's not even he didn't even have the the, the res, he, he did not even show them the respect of using his own poop. No. He didn't he, he did he That's had second hand shit. Second hand shit. That is actually a second hand shit is actually literally really a thing. Well, fecal transplants are a thing. You can get a shit transplant. Yeah. I just... So he, got, he got donor shit. He's got the... I showed them. No, you didn't. No, because you did, now you're going to jail. And you know what? I'm willing to bet that once 7-Eleven hears about this, you're not getting in any 7-Eleven. No. They're yeah, going to... That photo, they're going to be like, oh, it's the poop-throwing guy. Especially, oh, no. Sims, a convicted felon, has a lengthy rap shoot that includes convictions for, let's count them, Burglary, weapons possession, grand theft, animal cruelty, disorderly intoxication, loitering, drunk driving, and carrying a concealed weapon. Eight-time felon? Well, well so yeah. those aren't, like, loitering isn't a felony, but, you know. Fucking... Fuck you for the animal cruelty. And, and also, retail did not get paid enough to put up with your shit or someone else's shit that you happen to bring. Yeah. In a bucket. Because it's not like, you know, I think I think these motherfuckers see too much like CSI or or 48 hours later or something where where the uh, the, the hazmat team comes in and cleans stuff up with you the know. suits. It's, it's no, funny. it's the fucker who's There's making... There's a biohazard kit in every retail outlet you enter. Yep. In case someone vomits or shits on the floor or bleeds. And you, your $10 an hour ass, has to go get the biohazard kit, which I will tell you is basically gloves, sometimes a paper mask, mm -hmm. and some cleaning stuff with bleach. It's good luck. Hope you don't catch anything. Right. Good luck not getting hepatitis. Or Ebola. Or whatever. I hear whooping coughs making a comeback. Hey, Terry, you know what we haven't had in a long time? Sanity? There's one of our trademark phrases on this show. No one wants to see your penis. No, they don't. Well, this, uh, th this guy did take it to, an, to the next level. No one wants to see your penis beaten on their vehicle. Wow. Drunk whacked his penis on woman's car, then did poo in street, 
as they sat and ate chips. That's that's very so British. That headline I feel like is missing a few. Did poo in street? Um, a drunk continually whacked his penis against a car and then did a poo on the floor. That's a that's a starting line if I ever heard one. As the women inside the vehicle ate their chips. John Henson had been on a marathon drinking session when he ruined the women's seaside trip to Red Car. Without warning, he opened his trousers and began whacking his genitals on the car door. They're just they're they're going to town on that word whacking. Um well, and every time I you you say it, I think of the Henry Rollins story. Just whacking. Uh, whacking his penis in the toilet, toilet seat. seat. Whacking. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> the driver called the man a dirty bastard and threw some chips toward him, shut her window, and then screamed for her mom, a bastard in the car, <laughs> to do this. Seagull. What? He's not a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some chips at him and he'll go away. No, probably not. Prosecutor Rachel Dodsworth said Henson, 44, continued to wiggle his penis around and then tried to get in through the car window. Panicked, the women... That's how you get your penis cut off with a car window. Yeah. Panicked, the women shouted for Henson to go away and tried to move their car. Uh, they were blocked in. At this point, he dropped his trousers, turned, bent forward, and did a poo in the street near the car. As our series of events unfolded around midday on June 28th, the court also heard Henson shouted obscene sexual remarks at the women before he was eventually calmed down. I... It's, <laughs> I just... It, I don't... John Nixon mitigating said Henson had been an alcoholic since 22 and also mentioned a difficult childhood. Okay. Someone in the chat makes a good point. I have told you many times that if he got a little too excited, their paint job is ruined. <laughs> Computer Roman said the man's a wacko. That's bad. <laughs> look, look. I, okay, difficult childhood. Yeah. What kind, of, what part of your difficult childhood involved you smacking your dick into someone's car? I mean, that would be a difficult childhood. Yes. If that's what you did for fun. It's, this is what, what what was the name of that that Scottish movie with the little kid who wanted to be a dancer? Oh, Billy Elliot. Billy Elliot. Yeah. This is like you Billy Elliot. Spider Man Tom Holland originated the role of Billy Elliot on London's West End on stage. This is like this is like Billy Elliot, except you grew up and you knew you were destined to beat your penis onto someone's car. Yeah. That's that's not a great destiny. <laughs> it's not exactly like Luke Skywalker. No, it's not. It's not like a Ray kind of destiny. I'm a tallywhacker like my father before me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, good for him, though, for being well enough endowed to be able to whack his dick on someone's car. That's true. Because, uh, like, let's be honest, if you're packing like three inches, you're not going to be able to do that without humping the car. So good for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Make better use of your gifts. You know what? You, you know you you mentioned that. You know what's happening? What happened in my head? I am so great. I am so great. Everybody loves me. I am. So great. <laughs> I look forward to the YouTube comments telling me that I'm I'm bigoted against dudes with small dicks or something. Oh. And finally, finally this week we we'll go back to Florida. One of the phrases, I absolutely hate this phrase of the modern era is, if you see something, say something. Yeah. Never mind that they never quite defined for people what the something is. It's a short jump be. to the thought police, isn't it? Well. We've been watching Babylon 5. And man. Some of that gets a little thought police, a lot thought policey. Well. 
in this one, this is this is one of those instances where everybody heard saw something. I don't I and they said something and no one knew what the fuck was going on. Information implosion. Police and city leaders knew nothing of FPL explosions. Uh, FPL claims contractor notified Jacksonville authorities of implosion plan. Listen to this. This is fucking <laughs> a shocking wake up call for residents of North Jacksonville as Florida power and light imploded part of a coal powered plant at 8 a.m. Houses shook, windows rattled, and nearly a dozen fire crews barreled toward the blast. The scare was due to a planned implosion, planned by Florida Power and Light. The problem is no one seemed to know about it except Florida Power and Light and the contractors hired to demolish the towers. Authorities said the, with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office said they were never notified by, of the planned implosions and dispatched crews to the scene Fire Chief Curtis Wilson said the Florida Jackson, uh, the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department was aware in advance of the implosions. But the mayor's office said it was also unaware. This contradicts what Florida Power and Light officials told said Saturday. We have been able to confirm so far this morning that it, it is our contractor, DCI, notified the fire department on Tuesday, July 31st via email. In addition, they have a permit through the city. That required approval from another of other a number of other emergency responders, including the police department and the bomb squad. But they all forgot. Apparently, so they have the papers to prove this shit. They have the permits, but apparently nobody in the government told anybody else that a big but ass was like, "Oh, you guys were serious." <laughs> oh, we thought you were kidding. Oh, okay. Because this is one of those things you want to get the word out for. Yeah. Because welcome to America in the 21st century. If we start hearing explosions, people will freak the fuck out. Which is funny because there are parts of the world where that's like every day. Like, Diamanda lives in Northern Ireland. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, sometimes shit blows up. <laughs> Even now, she's like, sometimes a fucking car blows up. That's, That's just the thing that happened. Over here, no, no, in no. In America, a car backfires, and all the white people are like, Aah! I'll tell you what happened this weekend, uh, this Sunday. A squirrel, and this happens a lot around here. I don't know why. A squirrel decided it was his day to YOLO. Sometimes they go across the power lines with no problem, but every once in a while, there's that one squirrel that hits the transformer just right, and oh. he and explodes. The squirrel explodes, and the no. transformer explodes, and it's very loud. And what happened? What? Poor squirrel. They do that. And what happens every single time is everyone immediately comes outside. People are on their phones. They're looking around. It's just like this collection of folks. Like the fucking world is ending. <laughs> it brings the it brings the neighborhood together. So you have, let's say, an entire power plant. Yeah. Blows the fuck up. People are gonna be a little concerned if they didn't know that shit was gonna happen. Yeah. That's that's like folks are large, like large unexpected explosions tend to make us very nervous. And not only do we get very nervous, we are also very heavily armed in America. Yeah. So they, they hear an explosion. They're like, it's time, Velma. And out come the guns. I mean, Dan has an elaborate, like, zombie apocalypse plan. People Dan is instructing me on, like, depending on how far away the mushroom cloud is, whether I drive toward it or away from it. For, for like, my... So to him, like, an unexpected explosion in town... You'd be like, get the cats. It's go time. For for our foreign viewers, you have to understand there are some people in America who don't dread an all-out explosive type altercation. No, they, they jerk off to it. They're they they're longing for the day just to show everybody how well prepared they are. This is right. like it's the ultimate I fucking told you so. There's dudes with a bunker full of fucking dehydrated food. And guns. 
and they're just waiting to be able to tell somebody, well, you should have thought about that. Did I hear Simba? Yeah. He's at the gate, like, Mom. Mom. So I just I just love how the entire government knew they had the permits, and yet everybody's just like, I don't fucking know. What? I didn't get CC'd on that one. I didn't yeah. get that. There are times you could play I didn't get the memo. When a power plant explodes is not one of those times. Up here in New Jersey, it was when one lane of the George Washington Bridge was closed for a month. Mm. And nobody could get anywhere. Yeah. yeah. The New Jersey government got that memo. It was so weird. I mean, I, I, I used to work in IT. So I can tell you, I am an expert at I didn't get that memo. But you're also an expert at calling people out. Yes. You did get the memo because yes. you can pull all the data. <laughs> nope. like, actually, you did. So I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, if you know something's about to explode, tell somebody. Don't freak them the fuck out. If you're about to blow something up. They did. They told everybody. They got the permits and everything. Yeah. They they got the fucking they they did it the right way. It was the local government's like I didn't do it. It's not my fault. That mm -hmm. is the, that is what happens every single time. Do I ever hold Simba up like Simba? No. No. I don't know if you caught the beginning of the show, but that, there would be bleeding. That's a way to lose a hand. Simba has rage issues. A little fucking cobra with fur. But he's a good boy. We've learned that not only does no one want to see your penis, no one wants your penis to be beaten on their car. No. One. No. Nobody wants you stamping your imprint on their car. Maybe someone does. Maybe someone somewhere, that's their thing. But you know what? Wait for them to, to ask first. Let also, them make... It's kind of unsanitary. Mm. You don't know where they've driven that car. <laughs> You don't know who's touched that car. Oh, you can get bird poop on your penis. I seriously uh, question people who will just rub their fucking jiggly bits on public places. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mom wouldn't let me hold the handrail on the escalator because it was too much germs. And there are people who will just take off their pants and hump that shit. <laughs> We've learned this week, if you get kicked out of the 7-Eleven, let that shit go. There's another 7-Eleven. There's another 7-Eleven, I promise you. There, there are lots of 7-Elevens. We've learned flying a plane is a little more complicated than just pushing buttons. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, it's, it's not like the autopilot. It's and not, even if you know how, you can't just take any plane. You know what? I, I swear to God, I love Star Trek, but I hate them because they have ruined the concept of autopilot. The whole idea of you just push a few buttons and everything goes. That's, yeah. that's not how planes work. Autopilot is, it. You. it's not like you even program a core. It's not, the plane is not steering for you. Right. You're, just, you're just putting it in a, to, where you can get up for a second. And the plane is going to keep itself level. It won't fall out of the sky. It's not like it's it's not like it's driving itself to your, its destination. It's not like in the movie Airplane, where a little guy inflates. No. And does this. Shit's more. Comp We've also learned calling it a bomb threat is not calling in customer service. No. Stop it. What it is is calling in people who are legally allowed to go up your butthole. Maybe that cures entitlement. I don't know. Like, maybe we just have to let this shit run its course. And when people get enough cavity searches and police records, they'll stop it. <laughs> maybe that's where you keep your entitlement all the way up your ass. And finally, we've learned when encountering a mammal the size of a Honda... Just leave it alone. Yeah, don't don't pick a fight. That's that's not how that that doesn't sound like a good vacation to me, you know? Just leave it alone. Leave it the fuck don't do it's it's a fight. It's this is nature's version of a truck. 
And the bison doesn't want anything to do with you. He's just no. going about his day doing bison stuff, whatever they do. I don't know what bison do, but whatever they do, he's doing it. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want you fucking with him. Hey, fuck's this. Like, you, you, we already killed most of his people. Leave the last one in peace. Someone said they're not endangered anymore. But even if they're not. They've put up with enough of our bullshit. Just leave them alone. I mean, I personally have killed like 300 in Oregon Trail alone. 